Today I'm replacing the wheel bearing on a 2006 Volkswagen Jetta. First step, you have to get the caliper and rotor off. So what I like to do instead of disassembling this whole thing, just pull the big carrier bolts off the back, this one and then this one. They're 22 millimeter socket, that's what you're gonna need to release it. Take that and hang it up at the coil spring with some caliper hooks or a coat hanger or whatever. Just hang that up out of the way. Pull the set screw off the rotor and pull the rotor off the hub. All right, now with that stuff out of the way, you're gonna want to um, loosen your axle bolt. I have a, um, I have an impact I'm gonna use to take this bolt out. If you don't have an impact and you're doing this at home, um, before you disassemble anything, before you disassemble the, before you even take the wheel off the car, it's a good idea to um, to pull the center cap out here and just crack it loose a little bit, then then lift it, and then you can pull it out the rest of the way. Um, sometimes those can be very tight, and if you don't have big pneumatic, you know, um, half inch impact around, then that's you should do it on the ground with a breaker bar. So. I'm just going to take this bolt off and then I'm going to take these three nuts for the lower ball joint off the control arm. It's a 16 millimeter socket is what you're going to need. Um, take these three nuts off here and then you can take the control arm and, and pull down on it, pull it off the studs and then the hub will swing away and then you'll get quite a bit of clearance. So I'm going to do that right now. All right, now with that stuff done, the um, axle just you know the just pushed out of the hub should come out by hand pretty easily if it if it doesn't just fall right out like this one did then you can um you can tap on the end of the bolt just you know have the bolt in maybe five or six threads and then just tap on the head of the bolt to push the axle out of the hub and then this thing i just pulled down on it and swung it up out of the way so that's all the room you really need now you can see this one's a pretty rusty example but you can see these four triple square bolts you have to um take out so I'm going to do that now. They they can be pretty rusty, so when you're when you're doing this, make sure you pick any any dirt out of these um out of these bolts. I'm sorry, my lights horrible. Make sure you pick any uh, any dirt out of those and then tap the socket all the way till it bottoms out in the bolt head because you will strip those and then and it kind of turns into a pain. So um yeah, I'm going to tap the socket down, break all those loose, get them out of there, and then uh I'll uh, show you the next step. All right, now with all those bolts out, there's nothing holding this in other than uh, rust, basically. And um, it's it's not really a press fit. It just has a little shoulder and it drops into here. So they rust in place pretty bad sometimes, depending on where you live and how old the car is and everything. But um, this one, the new one comes with a, a hub and a bearing all pressed together. So everything is getting replaced. So you're not really gonna damage anything that you need to worry about um, reusing. So usually when I'm doing this on an Audi or something where I'm going to press the hub into the bearing, I would take a bolt, put it threaded in here, an air chisel on the head of the bolt to, to shake it out of the hub, but or out of the uh, spindle, the upright, whatever you want to call it. Um, on this one, you can just you can just smash this back of this with a hammer, and um, like like that. You might need something a little bigger than this, but right here, and it'll just it'll just fall right off. So. I'm going to do that now. All right, so that came out pretty easy. I'm just showing you why I'm replacing this. I'm not doing this for the normal um, wheel bearing noise. I'm actually doing this because I had a wheel speed sensor fault. It had a wheel speed sensor malfunction. And um, the way I kind of figured out it was a, um, a mechanical problem with the uh, tone ring that's built into the dust shield on the wheel bearing versus it just being a sensor problem is um, a good way to tell it's not always 100 percent accurate but a pretty pretty solid method is if you can clear the fault with the car at a standstill and the fault clears and stays off and um and then when you drive it the fault returns then it's more likely a mechanical problem you know than a problem with the actual tone ring this one you can see right there there's a piece of the seal for the wheel bearing slash tone ring and uh it's just completely falling apart and so the um the wheel speed sensor reads right here it's hard to see but right there that's where the wheel speed sensor picks up it picks up on the back of this um, this wheel bearing so um, when you have a wheel speed sensor fault on one of these it's uh, 
honestly more commonly a wheel bearing problem than it is a uh, wheel speed sensor problem. So that's why I'm replacing this. This wheel bearing sounded fine. There was no real problem other than that. So next step you want to do is just clean this real well. Um, it doesn't have to be spotless, but you want to uh, you want to make sure that minimally this um, the flat surface in the front's pretty clean. Just use a scraper, or a uh, wire wheel if that's what you have, and just make sure it looks pretty good. And uh, the inside bore here, just scrape this the best you can. If you don't have anything else, you can you can scrape it with a a flat blade screwdriver, just something so the new one goes in nicely. Brush some grease on it or anti-seize and then you can put the new one in. The new one should come with new bolts. The bolts have Loctite built onto them and um, just kind of uh, reverse procedure from there. Pretty simple job. Um, it is something you can do at home. Uh, yeah, just showing kind of generally overview of how this this goes. So thanks for watching.